amazing matches and one takeover that might not have felt like the rest. Welcome to the second annual NXT TakeOver in your house review and welcome to a brand new episode of Kimmy Talks Wrestling and we are starting Like this NXT takeover didn't feel like an NXT takeover. The build was eh, the matches were eh, but did the lack of build really make this takeover feel great? No, but it wasn't that bad. So we start off with a fun six man tag team match with Legato Del Fantasma taking on Bronson Reed and MSK in a winner takes all match. This was just fun. It wasn't bad. It was okay. It was a fun match, an easy match to watch. Um, Bronson Reed basically killed Santos Escobar when Santos went to go hold the North American Championship. And Bronson literally just ran him into the wall like they did on Tuesday. And MSK pins one of the members of Legado Del Fantasma to win and keep all of their gold. Where does Legado Del Fantasma go from here? I honestly have no idea. <laughs> Do they get called out? Who knows? But this was just a fun, easy match. Which was interesting was the match that followed between Zia Lee and Mercedes Martinez. Now, we haven't seen Zia Lee in months. And she had the little, she had like braids in her hair that like matched her gear. It was blue. The entrance was really cool. She had like a sword and she was fighting the air, or some people saw on Twitter she was fighting John Cena. This match was. Eh. So, Zia, this was a great showing with from Zia Lee, no dispute on that, and Mercedes got some offense, but this was just so dominant Zia Lee. Now, these two do have some chemistry, as they did show from four years ago at the Mayan Classic, Mercedes Martinez did defeat Zia Lee to move on in the tournament, but this match really didn't get going, I felt. It wasn't bad. It wasn't good, it was just okay, but the main thing that you want to focus on is what happened after the match. So Zia Lee gets the one after delivering such a halucious kick. The guy, hand Boa, handed Zaya a chair, Mercedes fought back, and then all of a sudden the lights went out, and then Mei Ying, who's the person that sits in the chair, got up, went to go choke Mercedes Martinez, Mercedes tries to fight with the chair, and then doesn't get the advantage in Mei Ying chokes her out as all three of them are standing there looking strong at the end. Now, I'm assuming this feud isn't over, so anyone that thought Mercedes Martinez was going to debut tonight with Eva Murray, it's not happening. Thank God. Now it's going to happen because I just said it into the universe. But like, I felt like the build, after, like the stuff that happened after the match was way more important than the match, but if this does go to around two or three, I hope that the match is better than what happened for, in this match. Now for my match of the night! For the million dollar championship, it was Cameron Grimes versus LA Knight. This match was really good. Um, <laughs> Cameron Grimes is just so extra. It's so funny. So the funny part was, you know, they were fighting on the ladder, and then Cameron Grimes just points, and the commentators were like yelling at Grimes, like just climb the ladder, climb the ladder, and Cameron's like, no, I want the golden ladder. I felt like this match is really good. Like I said, it's my match of the night. I just felt like these two have really good chemistry and out of all the matches that they've had over the past couple months, this was their best match, but the wrong person won. And I'll tell you why. When LA Knight won, there was literally no reaction. And the same thing when we get to the main event. No reaction. The crowd, with 300 people, were just like, what? What do you mean LA Knight won? So I'm assuming they're trying to build up maybe to a bigger crowd to have Cameron Grimes win. I don't think this is the last we see of these two. But this match was really good. I just wish because of how over Grimes was that Grimes would have won. And I feel like this is the difference between AEW and WWE. Just because going back, to, I don't want to, I don't want to make this comparison, but I feel like it just makes sense. When you go to the Casino Battle Royal and Jungle Boy won, I felt like they listened to the crowd just because of how over Jungle Boy was. Where here, they really didn't listen to the crowd, they let LA Knight win, and then it was just like this dead reaction. Where you kept saying every single, like, match, how this was the biggest crowd that you had in the CWC. So. Yeah, and then from there we go to the women's match, 
which em like Ember Moon had such a great showing. This match was really good. I like this match. It was just a, it, like I said in the beginning, fun match to watch. So Dakota was getting involved, and then Shotzi comes, and then Shotzi throws Dakota into the plants, and then people that were close to Dakota were trying to say, like, oh, Dakota loves plants, how could you do that to her? Of course, Raquel Gonzalez gets the win. Ember Moon had a really good showing, and I feel like this just shows people how great Ember Moon is for those who forgot, and I really, like, Ember Moon's someone that should go to the main roster. I know that they're not going to based on, like, what happened with, like, in the main event when Johnny was walking to the ring, you saw Dakota and Raquel still fighting Shotzi and Ember. But Ember's just so ready. I don't know. I don't understand how you misused her the first time. But this match is really good. The right person won. I don't think this is the end. I think we're going to get a tag team match somewhere down the line. Maybe this Tuesday. Maybe next Tuesday. But now we get to that main event. So I will say... Johnny Gargano and the Ways tribute to the Click was so good. So Austin Theory was Diesel, Candice LeRae was X Pac, <laughs> Johnny was Shawn Michaels, and then Indy was Razor Ramon. It, it was just so good. I loved it. So here's my thing with this. I said that this match wasn't going to be good. Now this match did exceed my expectations, but you do realize something. The four men that were in the ring most of the time had such great chemistry, which is why the match was so good. And those four men, Gano, Kyle O'Reilly, Pete Dunn, and Adam Cole. Cross was mostly on the outside the whole time, so the four of them very much carried the match. And if you watch the press conference, when Karrion was asked who he was fearful of the most, it was Riley submitting to Cole and the ending sequence was Riley having like Cole in a submission lock and Cole was about to tap and then Cross got his submission hold on and then Riley passed out. That is long term storytelling my friends. And of course Cross wins but that's not how we end NXT. Cause McKenzie Mitchell follows William Regal outside and she just wants to know his thoughts and Regal goes in seven years of being general manager, things have just spiraled out of control, and maybe it's time for a change. So, of course, the new rumor right now is that Samoa Joe re-signed with David Blee, and that Samoa Joe is going to be the new GM. Um, I've seen Daniel Bryan voting around, that doesn't even also make sense. I think Sarah Del Rey, I think from MLW, I think I've seen her name floating around, I think that also makes perfect sense, because I heard rumor that she signed with David Blee. That's my take. I don't think that's going to happen but that is a possibility. So this NXT TakeOver was okay. Of course it wasn't their best one, but I mean the matches weren't really like, oh my god, this is a must-see match, <laughs> you know? On a scale of 1 to 10, I rate it like a 7. It could be better, but I'm hoping, you know, they have Great American Bash in three weeks. That should be really good. They're rumored next NXT TakeOver is going to be the night after SummerSlam, which also should be really good because that is going to be, I believe, in front of a much bigger crowd in Vegas. So yeah. And that's it for me. Make sure to like this video, comment what you guys thought about TakeOver, click that bell for notifications and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with our Monday Night Raw review. And make sure to check out the newest edition of the All Elite Podcast, which you can see on this channel. It should be the video right before mine. And then also see Tiff's interview later. See that too. Alright, bye.